Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most fascinating and ambitious pieces of defense technology in recent years, the Israeli High Altitude Aerostat System known as Skydu, also called Tal Shamiyam, in Hebrew, or the High Availability Aerostat System, Haas. We'll look at what it is, why it was developed, how it works, its strengths and vulnerabilities, and what it tells us about the evolving world of air and missile defense. Let's start with the, what, and, why. Israel has long faced a complex array of aerial threats, from rockets and missiles to drones, cruise missiles, and low-flying attack aircraft. In that context, traditional ground-based radars and fighter patrols are important but have limitations especially when detecting threats coming from challenging angles or at low altitude. Skydu was developed as a response, a tethered aerostat that carries a powerful radar and stays aloft at high altitude, giving a broader vantage point, longer detection horizon, and persistent surveillance capability. The development of the system was a joint effort between the Israel Missile Defense Organization, IMDO, in Israel and the United States Missile Defense Agency, MDA, in the United States. The aerostat platform itself is produced by the U.S. company TCOM LP. They build a large model called the 117M Strategic Aerostat that's used for this project. It carries the radar payload developed by the Israeli side with key components from ELTA systems and is tethered to a ground station, powered and connected via fiber optic link. Let's talk numbers and core specifications. The aerostat is approximately 117 meters in length, approximately 384 feet, and is designed to operate at altitudes up to around 4,877 meters, approximately 16,000 feet. From that altitude its line of sight horizon is about 249 kilometers, approximately 155 miles, in ideal conditions. Payload capacity is in the ballpark of 8,165 kilograms, around 18,000 pounds, and it is capable of long endurance, up to 60 days in some configurations. The core idea, by operating at high altitude, it dramatically increases radar coverage and detection time compared to ground-based systems which might be obstructed by terrain, curvature of the earth, clutter, or limited angular sectors. So how does Skydu operate in practice? The aerostat is launched and inflated, tethered to a mooring station on the ground. The envelope contains lighter-than-air gas, typically helium, and supports a large radar assembly enclosed inside an inflatable, windscreen, or rod ohm under the main envelope. The tether is powered and has fiber-optic data connections to ground, enabling real-time data transmission from the radar payload. The radar can track multiple targets at significant distances, Reports indicate detection capability for threats such as cruise missiles and drones at ranges in excess of 250 kilometers. Because of the elevated position, the system has a wider field of view and can detect low-flying threats earlier than many ground radar systems. In deployment terms, Skydu was publicly unveiled in November 2021 and declared operational for the Israel Defense Forces IDF, in 2022. It was initially deployed in the north of Israel, near the border with Lebanon, a region from which threats such as rockets, missiles, drones and other aerial incursions have been a persistent challenge. The idea was to extend Israel's surveillance reach and provide early warning of threats incoming from that direction. The Israeli Air Force took delivery of the platform around March 2022. Now looking at the tactical advantages, one major benefit is improved early warning and detection of low-altitude threats. Traditional radars can struggle with clutter, terrain masking, and limited horizon, an aerostat at high altitude mitigates those. Additionally, because Skydu stays aloft for long periods, it offers persistent surveillance rather than short sorties, meaning fewer gaps in coverage. Its large payload capability allows a radar of substantial power, which means better detection range and target discrimination. Also, being tethered simplifies some logistic aspects compared to manned aircraft or satellites. From a strategic perspective, this system bolsters layered defense by adding another, sensor layer, high above the battlefield, which complements ground radars, air assets and satellite surveillance. However, no system is without trade-offs, and Skydu has encountered its share of challenges, which are instructive. One major issue is vulnerability. While high altitude offers great coverage, being tethered and somewhat fixed in location makes it a target. 
In May 2024, the IDF confirmed that the system was hit by a drone launched by Hezbollah near northern Israel, in what was described as a deep strike. The system's high profile and importance made it a target for adversaries. There were also reports of weather damage and operational downtime which caused delays and raised questions about its overall resilience and cost-effectiveness. Another issue is cost and logistics. Aerostats of this size are expensive to build, maintain and operate. They require large ground mooring stations, power, tether management, regular maintenance, and helium replenishment. Considering the high value and fixed position, adversaries might focus on disabling or defeating the system through direct attack, electronic warfare or drone swarms. The system also has limitations in bad weather or high winds, and full operational status depends on reliable ground support. These factors have led some Israeli defense officials to contemplate whether to continue the project or scale it back. According to a 2024 report, Defense authorities were reviewing whether to shut down the Sky Do project in light of cost, vulnerabilities and repair timelines. Now let's discuss how this fits into the broader defense architecture, and why it's relevant beyond just Israel. The concept of using aerostats with radar payloads for persistent aerial surveillance is not brand new, comparable systems exist or have been proposed elsewhere, for example the US. JLENS program. But what Sky Do demonstrates is a modern take combining a large aerial sensor platform, advanced radar and communications, and integration into a layered defense regime. Moreover, it shows how nations are adapting to the increasing threat of unmanned systems, cruise missiles, low-flying missiles and swarms, which challenge older detection paradigms. International interest has also grown. For example, Azerbaijan has ordered the Sky Do Aerostat system, or an equivalent, from Israel to detect low-flying threats and drones showing that this kind of capability is seen as exportable and part of the future of air defense. This underscores that the system is not just a one-off experiment, but part of a broader trend of high-altitude, persistent surveillance platforms for defense. From a technological standpoint, the challenges and lessons of sky do are quite rich. Keeping a large envelope aloft for long missions means dealing with weather, temperature changes, helium leak rates, tether stresses, mooring station reliability, and data communications security. The radar payload must deal with clutter, seat land interface, low RCS radar cross-section threats like stealth drones, and must feed data into a command network quickly and accurately. The ground component also has to manage the tether, power supply, communications, and the interface to the air defense network. In short, Integrating this large sensor into a seamless defense grid is as much a systems engineering challenge as it is an aeronautical one. Importantly, from a strategic perspective, SkyDo illustrates how defense is shifting beyond just guns and missiles to sense, detect, network and respond. The sooner you detect a threat, especially a low altitude, high speed threat, the more time you have to make decisions, intercept, warn civilians, reposition assets, etc. By deploying a radar balloon, Israel aimed to extend the detection horizon and give more lead time. But this also means that the adversaries rapidly adapt. As seen in the drone strike on the system, vulnerabilities become targets. So the cat and mouse game continues. Let's examine a scenario to make this real. Imagine a cruise missile launched from several hundred kilometers away, flying at low altitude to avoid radar detection. A ground radar system might detect it only when it becomes visible over terrain or at sea land boundaries, giving minimal warning. But with sky due aloft high above the terrain, the radar sees the threat earlier, perhaps hundreds of seconds earlier, enabling air defense pickup SAMs, interceptors, drones forcing the adversary to rethink routes, altitude profiles or times of attack. That means improved deterrence, or at least better reaction time, which in modern conflict can save lives. On the flip side, adversaries adapt. They might use drones to attack the aerostat directly, use jamming electronic warfare to degrade its radar, or use weather as a factor to force it to descend or deactivate. If the system becomes non-operational, then the coverage gap opens, and the whole defense layer is weakened. If the cost and repair time become too great, the strategic value diminishes. That appears to be exactly the concern Israeli defense officials are grappling with. According to reports, 
After the 2024 drone strike and weather damage, some in Israel's defense establishment questioned whether Skydu's operational cost, vulnerability and downtime justified its continued deployment. In terms of how this might evolve, there are a number of possibilities. One is the continued use of aerostats like Skydu but with improved resilience, e.g., multiple redundant platforms, hardened tethering stations, modular payloads that can be swapped quickly, better weather tolerance. Another is integration with other sensors, drones, satellites, ground radar, SIGINT, ELINT, electronic intelligence to create a truly networked sensor grid. Additionally, we might see the aerostat concept extended to civilian border surveillance, maritime domain awareness, or even as high-altitude communications platforms. The challenge will be balancing cost, vulnerability and operational benefit. For countries like Pakistan, which is your country and region, you're based in Jang Sadr, Punjab, Pakistan, there are interesting lessons. If you face aerial or missile threats or anticipate them, the concept of a persistent high-altitude surveillance platform could offer a significant advantage. However, you should weigh deployment cost, maintenance, weather, environmental factors, vulnerability to attack, and how you integrate it with the rest of your defense architecture. In many cases, smaller or more mobile systems might be more feasible rather than a giant fixed aerostat which becomes a high-value target. In closing, the Skydu system is a bold piece of engineering and defense strategy, tethered to the ground, floating high above the terrain, scanning a wide horizon, offering early detection and extended surveillance. It exemplifies the shift in modern security from purely kinetic capabilities guns, missiles to sensing, networking and rapid reaction. Yet it also underscores the reality that every advance in defense invites a counter-advance, vulnerability is real, cost is real, and practicality matters. For viewers of this channel, the takeaway is that defense systems are not just about being able to shoot, but about being able to see sooner, understand faster and link sensors and shooters in smart ways. Thanks for tuning in, I hope this breakdown of Skydu gave you a clearer sense of what it is, how it works, what it can do, and where it might go. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next deep dive into defense and technology. And if you have any questions or something you'd like me to cover, drop it in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe.